My name is Paul Weaver. It's good to be with you today and I want to share a thought with you for your spiritual journey. Most of us improve by practice. My granddad used to have a saying, you improve as you get better. And I thought that sounded really, really good until I became an older person and realized he was saying the same thing. Our first attempts at anything can be quite catastrophic. Watch any child learning to walk or learning to ride a bike and you're waiting for them to fall over because you know when they fall over, they will learn how to stand up or how to ride the bicycle. And so people learn by falling sometimes. And um, it's possible, of course, if you fall off a bike, never to get on one again. And that's a shame because then you haven't really mastered the art of riding and that is denied to you for the rest of your lives. In the Christian life, we are not promised perfection at our first attempt of each stage of life. Sometimes we fall and come short of God's intentions for our lives. Today, I want to encourage you who have fallen at some hurdle to get up again and have another go. The man I want to look at to help us is Peter. Peter, the Bible records, failed at least three times. He fell off his bike. Each of the stories are to do with Peter opening in his mouth and to say the wrong thing. I'm sure that we've all done that. I've done it many times, wished I could take the words back in again. And unfortunately, sometimes we never actually succeed in addressing that problem. And it leaves us in a place where we are separated from people because we've never resolved the problem. Uh, Peter's uh, falls really come into three areas. First of all, in Matthew chapter 18, Paul's ego was really high because he'd actually given the right answer to the big question that Jesus posed to his disciples when he said, who do you say that I am? Peter, in the next breath after his success, is saying the wrong thing as he seeks to take Jesus aside and stop him on his journey to his sacrificial death on a cross. Beware that success can often open the door to failure. Peter's second fall comes in Matthew chapter 28, when Peter was afraid for his life and he panics and enters into what we would call today a dark place where he denies his relationship with Jesus three times. That seems to be a big fall after he had been trained for nearly three and a half years by the greatest teacher on the earth, Jesus Christ. Uh, but falls can happen at any stage of our journey. Peter's third fall is highlighted in Acts chapter 10, where Peter and uh, the apostles had been teaching a theological error to the Jerusalem church. They taught that salvation was only for the Jews. It took a revelation on a rooftop and a visit to Cornelius's house to correct the error. Now, the Bible records the failures as well as the successes of individuals in its biblical history. This is not an excuse for us to fail, but a reason for us to get up and try again when we fall. The Bible has something to say to Christians about the times when other Christians fail or fall off the bike. Unfortunately, the church has been far too quick to judge and far too slow to help. Paul the Apostle gives instruction to us in Galatians chapter 6, verses 1 to 4, to how, to, how we can help the fallen and safeguard our own personal relationship with God by three simple practices. Here they are. Restore gently. People who fall land into two camps, denial or devastation. Whichever one they are in, they are vulnerable. They need to see that restoration is possible, but they need to understand that it requires handling with love, care and sound counsel. So restore gently. Secondly, watch over your own life and cond when conducting your uh, help to others. Paul says, be aware of the temptations that lie at your own door. By understanding our own frailty, 
we are able to understand the fallen and at the same time to resist the temptations that knock at our door. The third area Paul talks about is carrying the burden of the fallen. Often when we are helping a person to ride a bike, we hold the saddle and in so doing, we are taking the weight of the inexperienced learner. We help them to stay on the bike, but they are not yet ready to ride without our support. Paul calls this function in verse 2 a burden carrier. The actual picture in the Greek language for this process is played out in a battle scene where a wounded comrade is helped by his fellow soldier. The comrade takes the wounded soldier's pack and carries it for him as he takes him from the battlefield to a place of safety and restoration. And when the comrade is fully well again, the pack of the fallen soldier is returned to him. Peter's failure was addressed by Jesus on every occasion. He is addressing the way to help the man who falls. He comes and he picks him up. He talks him through the problem at Philippi. He's denial in the court of the high priest. He sends a vision to correct his theology. The result on every occasion was a restored Peter. A Peter who became the church's spokesperson on the day of Pentecost and the eventual educator of the Jerusalem church concerning salvation for the whosoever. Can you imagine today what it must be like to be in a church full of burden carriers, people who lift fallen people to a better place, where the fallen have spiritual people around them who can carry their weight in the time of their need and restore them back to spiritual health. Of course, Christmas is the perfect example of the spiritual one stooping down to be born of a virgin and through his sinless life and sacrificial death to be the lifter of the fallen. What a great ministry we are called to in the process of building better. Personally, and by helping others to get up and succeed next time around. So if you're on the floor today, get up. Let someone help you. Your better days are coming. Have a great day. God bless you.